guys welcome back to my channel today I'm going to help you understand the four basic and simple steps in cardiac arrhythmia interpretation are you ready let's begin first of all it is really a must to know the ECG paper it's easy you simply have to know that there is a horizontal axis a vertical axis a small box and a big box a horizontal axis represents time and is measured in seconds whereas the vertical axis represents amplitude and is measured in millimeters or millivolts now we have a small box and a small box is equal to 0.04 seconds in a horizontal axis whereas a small box is equal to 1 millimeter or 0.1 millivolt if we talk about the vertical axis now, the most important foundation in identifying cardiac arrhythmia is knowledge of the normal sinus rhythm. Now, what are the characteristics of a normal sinus rhythm? The P wave represents atrial depolarization. It occurs before QRS complex, amplitude 2 to 3 mm high or 2 to 3 small boxes high, duration 0.06 to 0.12 seconds or 1.5 to 3 small boxes, configuration rounded and upright, deflection upright or positive in all leads except in AVR. PR interval is the period of time from the onset of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. Its duration is 0.12 to 0.20 seconds, and this interval represents the time between the onset of atrial depolarization and the onset of ventricular depolarization. The QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization. It follows PR interval, amplitude, 5 to 30 mm high, duration 0.06 to 0.10 seconds, configuration there is a Q wave, an R wave, and an S wave, deflection it is positive and or upright in leads 1, 2, 3, AVF, AVL, and V4 to V6, and negative in V1 to V3. The isoelectric period, ST segment, following the QRS and ending at the beginning of T wave is the time at which both ventricles are completely depolarized. This segment roughly corresponds to the plateau phase of the ventricular action potential. The T wave represents ventricular repolarization. It occurs after the S wave. Amplitude 5 mm or 0.5 mV in leads 1, 2, and 3 and up to 10 mm in precordial leads. Now that you already have an idea of the normal sinus rhythm, let's proceed to identifying the heart rate. Given that the P wave, QRS complex, ST segment, and T waves are normal, if the heart rate is within 60 to 100, then that is normal sinus rhythm. If the heart rate is below 60, then, what, then that is what is called sinus bradycardia. And if the heart rate is more than 100, then that is sinus tachycardia. For the 6 second strip, just count 30 big boxes horizontally so that you will have a 6 second strip. Now, count the number of R waves in a QRS complex and multiply by 10. Simply, R waves times 10 is equal to heart rate. Example, that strip is a 6 second strip and let's count the R waves. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 times 10 is equal to 70, so heart rate is 70. For the sequence method, memorize this sequence. 300, 150, 175, 60, 50, 43, 37. Then count from the first QRS complex. The first thick line is 300, the next thick line is 150, and so on. Stop the sequence at the next QRS complex. Let's try it. 300, 150, 100. Therefore, 100 is the heart rate of this strip. The last method is the 1500 method. It is the most accurate of all. You just have to count the number of small boxes from one R wave horizontally to another R wave. In this example, there are 28 boxes from one R wave to the next R wave. Therefore, 1,500 divided by 28 is equal to 53, and the tracing is sinus bradycardia. 
Finally, let's proceed to the last step, which is identifying if the rhythm is regular or irregular. Now, we have two ways. We have the paper and pen method, and we also have the caliper method. Now, for this video, let's use the paper and pen method. Trace to our waves and compare if the distance is equal. This rhythm is regular. This rhythm is obviously irregular. This is sinus arrhythmia, which is usually related to breathing. When a person inhales, heart rate increases. When a person exhales, heart rate decreases. It is usually benign, but in older people, it can be alarming. The four basic steps in identifying cardiac arrhythmia is easy, right? If you have any requests, you can also comment down your request for the next content that I'm going to upload. Thank you for watching my video again. Please subscribe and uh, click the notification bell for further updates on my vlog. Thank you.